Hello everyone, welcome. This is PDH Paldige. Coming at me with another deck tech. We have one of my favorite group hub commanders, Woodvine Elemental. Uh, I say group hug, people disagree. The point is everyone's drawing, so you're hoping you buy any amount of favor. So what he says, he's a 4-4 trample for six mana. It's a little undercosted, but he pumps himself up and your whole crew with his ability. This parlay ability is definitely the backbone of the entire deck. Parlay says uh, whenever Woodvine Elemental Whenever Woodvine Elemental attacks, each player reveals a top card of his or her library. For each non-land card revealed this way, attacking creatures I control, so if I have a whole board I can swing with everything, they get plus one plus one for each card. And then everyone draws the card. So in the very least, everyone's getting something. If you're not attacking that person, they, they, might, uh, they might not want to destroy your things if they have a Doom Blade or something. But yeah, so in the very least, in these colors, you're getting a repeatable draw with him, if, even if you don't want to pump your whole board. Um, you do get to pump your whole board, so it's kind of a win-win situation. Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So the, the core is the fact that I think the mana dorks are insanely good in EDH and also PDH. We run six one mana cost mana dorks. So they're great, they help me accelerate into my commander faster, and they are also creatures that once I'm attacking with them, they're able to get pumped up. So one of the neat things about this deck is you don't know exactly how much bigger your creatures are going to get. But you can usually bank on getting plus two, plus two, or plus one, plus one. Um, there's a little bit of things you can do to, to scry or look at your own, the top card of your own library, so that you're, uh, a little, you're hedging your bets a little bit. But everyone runs about a third of their deck as lands. So, you're, you know, in theory, you should get two or three non-lands from everyone at the table. So this is pretty straightforward. You're accelerating with creatures. That's it for the one CMC creature acceleration. Now we have three more at two mana. Devoted Druid, Priest of Titania, and Steward of Valoran. So Devoted Druid's great because there are some combos in this deck that if you happen to piece them together, um, yeah, you can instantly go off and make uh, infinite tokens. The, the game plan is not combo, but the individual pieces are all good enough to play in the deck that there's no reason not to also include you know, the combo turns. Um, Priest of Titania is really great because when you're playing other mana dorks, she just gets better. And Steward of Valoran is insanely good uh, in this strategy because one of the downsides of him is the creatures have to be attacking. Um, so it's just nice to be able to have mana available for in between turns if you have like removal or something because he has vigilance. So the vigilance keyword is actually really, really relevant here. And that's just some more creatures that accelerate mana that also will get pumped later when you're attacking. To protect those creatures, we have everything you can possibly run that gives all your creatures greater toughness. So Fortifying Provisions, this is a newer card, it says uh, all creatures get plus one butt uh, that I control, and you also make a food token. Luma Thread Field is the same thing, but you can morph it. Spider Silk Armor, it's a staple in all the green decks, uh, it's the same thing as these other two cards that are worth running, but it also gives everyone the keyword reach, very very good. Uh, parapet, you can play it at fl as, a, as, a, as an instant. Usually don't, because if you do it dies, but yeah, it's just another card that gives your creatures one toughness. Veteran Armorer, um, you know, more fragile because he dies to creature removal. Uh, he doesn't actually protect himself, he doesn't pump himself up, but you know, if, if you're sitting a whole bunch of one ones, uh, mana dorks or tokens, it's just you want everything you can get. And then Ivy Lane Denison is categorically a combo piece, but also is perfect for this strategy, where if you have him out, and you're playing tokens, or you're playing, playing mana dorks, you can either put all the plus one plus one counters on Woodvine himself to, do, to go for commander damage, or you can spread them out across the mana dorks or tokens so that, they're, so that this card functions like these, where you're protecting yourself against uh, damage across the board. So we have a few token generators. I try to keep it light. Um, Guilt Leaf Ambush. Instant speed, three mana for two tokens, is good value at common. But this is also an elf card. So I am able to use uh, one of my green staples. It's not a green staple in every deck, but I use this in most green decks I make, or if, if not every green deck. Wood, wood, Wirewood Herald. When he dies, you can search your deck for an elf card and put it in your hand. So this is one of the things you could get. So this, when it dies, could just make tokens, which is really nice for the strategy. A cool thing is you can clash, which again, you, you do a little bit of a uh, 
control for the top of your library. So you could win the clash if you're able to man manipulate it all, and those creatures would get death touch. Depending on the scenario, if, if you know that you're going to win the clash, or confident that you're going to win the clash, and someone's attacking you, you can play this and get two death touch blockers, which is you know, the design of the card. It's a huge pro with basically no downsides. So yeah, th this can search for it, along with a few other cards. Like, yeah, for example, the combo piece Ivy Lane Denizen, or Devoted Druid. So that's the benefit there. Um, for the other token generators, Presence of Gond, which is the third piece of the infinite creature combo, which I don't know if, 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 if you're unfamiliar with it, it is these three. Devoted Druid, Ivy Lane Denizen, and Presence of Gond. You put Presence of Gond on Devoted Druid. You put minus one, minus one counters on to untap it so that you're able to tap it more to make one, one green creature tokens. When the creature token comes into play, Ivy Lane Denizen triggers. You put the plus one, plus one counter on Devoted Druid. Three card combo, two pieces that can be tutored. And since I'm in white, I can actually tutor for this as well with cards I'll show you in a bit. Um, these cards are perfect for my strategy. They just... Two one ones for, for three is perfectly on curve, but they also have the lifelink keyword, which is really great because you're actually pumping uh, indiscriminately all your creatures. So just having double lifelink, um, say say everyone reveals everyone reveals a non land. That means this normally would heal you two when you're attacking with the creatures, but in that scenario you'd heal for ten with this one card. It's just as fragile. They're still tokens; they can die, but it's it's nice to to have uh, incremental healing. And that's why I love both of these cards so much. I try to keep it light on the token generator, so I only have two more. Sprout Swarm, it's very, very good. Uh, it's an incredibly, incredible use of your mana. If you're just accelerating, especially in green, if you're just mana accelerating, you don't have much to do with your mana. It's just really great to, to Sprout Swarm over and over again. It is a slow, dirtily play, but it gives you inevitability. And again, it's synergy with your commander. You're able to pump those tokens on, um, on turns where you're swinging out. Rousing Souls is great. Uh, everyone gets to draw a card. You can, and you can, yeah, you could get up to four uh, flyers. You're banking on getting at least two because that, that's what would make it worth at that mana cost. Also, key is in these colors, there's not much draw. So that's why Parlay is so good on your commander as well. But you're, you're just happy to draw the card. Paying three mana to draw one actually isn't that bad. And to get tokens, it's really great. Evasive tokens as well, you, you really can't go wrong. It doesn't really matter that you're helping your opponents. That's it for the, the cards that are just token generators. Uh, we have a backup strategy. So one thing I didn't mention is Woodvine Elemental fits my category of commanders I like, where it's, it threatens commander damage, but isn't necessarily a I'm going to pump them up and swing at you and kill you in one turn kind of commander damage. It's the, the threats, like you have to deal with him. Um, that's what I like. So yeah, in the very least, I'm just drawing every turn if I'm not actually killing people with commander damage. But there are a few cards I put on him that, that Voltron him up. So I have a few equipments here. Explore Scope is extreme synergy with his ability. Because Parlay, you say you reveal. So this, while I'm attacking, I'll look at the top card of my library. And if it's a land, I'll get it out of the way so that when I Parlay with his ability, uh, I'm increasing my odds of hitting a non-land. So it, this is really great synergy. And also, it's mana acceleration. You really can't go wrong there. Um, giving him haste, he, he is bait for removal. Um, you try to convince people that they should draw cards, but if they can already draw cards, it's not a really good selling point. And not everyone wants to take 20 or 30 damage to draw a card, which I guess makes a little bit of sense. But yeah, so giving him haste once he, when he comes back into play is really nice. And then giving him flying with the, the sandals is, uh, is also very, very nice. He has trample, but sometimes if they're sitting on a wall of blockers, you, you really just can't punch through. He doesn't get that big. And the last one, this is also a combo piece, and it's a tutorable combo piece. Enchanted creature is plus one, plus one for each creature you control. That's nice with him. It just makes him big. He already has trample, so you don't mind that it's just raw stats. You could always cycle it. You basically never do that. Um, but yeah, again, this, this is an, uh, an infinite combo with, with Devoted Druid. Instead of doing Ivy Lane Denizen, you do these three. This gives Devoted Druid plus one, plus one, so you're able to put as many minus one, minus one counters as you want, because it gets bigger with the presence of Gond. So those auras that you use for your combo, which again, you're not always comboing off, but you're capable of slapping it together, is uh, Totem Guide Heart Beast and Helios Pilgrim. These are the cards that make me love white as a supporting color so much in PDH, because you have this really great suite, this really great package of supporting cards you can do to, 
or you know to have great auras so we'll go ahead and hop into some of those that you can get um, maybe the best one the one i almost always search for is temporal isolation so as before having hard removal for commanders isn't necessarily the best you you're not actually slowing them down when the the, the format's already so slow it's not really that big of a deal to disrupt them for a turn and then they just cast their commander again next turn. What you want is to have it stuck on the board actually doing nothing. So temporal isolation is really, really great. And it's, an, it's instant speed, so I'll tutor for this a lot. In this deck, you'll tutor for your combo pieces if you have others already. But if, I, if I'm just looking for something to grab, this is what I grab. Face fetters is also removal. If it's in the same category, you're turning off uh, commanders. You can also turn off other permanents, but you're turning off commanders. Lignify, same deal. Um, you're not hard killing, hard destroying the creature. You're just making it useless. So I do have some more cards I, that I consider removal. Let's go and in, go into the ones that are the least technically removal. We have provoke. Provoke is one of my favorite cards in all of PDH, not just green. Um, I just love it. Like you cycle for two mana. You draw a card, that's great. People would do that just as like an opportunity cost or a, the flexibility of a card. Like, oh, I'm gonna have a unique ability that if I can't use it, I'll draw a card. That's, that's kind of the point of, of cycling. But here, you get the benefit. You pay two mana, you draw a card, and the only downside is there has to be at least one creature on the board that you don't control. Where the upside is, if somebody's attacking someone other than you, you're able to untap and force an unfavorable block. Unfavorable block. So either the attacker is going to die in that unfavorable situation you set up, or the blocker. So it's removal that replaces itself. <laughs> and for two mana, it's great, because worst case scenario, you just cycle it. So I consider that removal. Sheen of Life Roar. Um, haven't really had too much testing with this, but it's really, really great. Not only can it function as removal the same way as Provoke, where you can force a creature to be blocked, um, you, can, you can channel it so that uh, it must be blocked. But also in this deck, you can just play it as a creature, and it makes your commander punch through, which is really, really great. Or, yeah, you can discard it to target one of your other creatures, which forces your commander to punch through. But it pulls double duty. If someone else is attacking someone else, and they have a commander that's going to kill, or an effect creature or something, you can target a creature other than that creature you want to go through. All creatures must block that other 1-1 like, token or something, and then everything else goes through. So this can do insane amounts of damage politically. And in your deck, it, it helps your commander, so it's worth it. Uh, we have Artifact and Enchantment Destruction. Um, I wanted to run as many creature versions of cards, so I run Seal of Cleansing and Seal of Primordium in every deck I can, but I guess at some point I took it out of here. And I think the, the logic was that these two cards fulfill the same role. They are open information, Artifact and Enchantment Destruction, that also, in this deck, they do, they're double duty, they're creatures, so I'm able to pump them up. So, that's the big thing. But yeah, I just love the idea of threatening to destroy your things rather than actually destroying your things. Relic Crush is a card I don't actually run in too many decks, but I really like, um, in this deck, that it doesn't have much draw to begin with. Like, yes, of course, you're drawing every turn with your commander, but if you're swinging every turn, you're not really controlling the game, you're, you're more aggroing people out. Um, but yeah, so it's really nice to have one card that destroys two cards. And uh, having some top end stuff to do with your mana is really nice in green where you're able to accelerate. So that's it for removal. We have a few cards that I don't really know how to categorize them, but um, we'll just go ahead and get into them. Tormont's Crypt basically belongs in every single deck. I know my play group cuts it over things like Relic, um, but I just, I'm too respectful of grave, st grave strategies to ever cut it, so it's in. Seldon's Cane, I have a personal affinity for this card. I just figure, like, if Mill is a prominent strategy in our playgroup, um, not recently, but I don't want to die to Mill. And if I can do anything in my power to either aggressively mulligan into it, uh, which is a little disrespectful, but, but just drawing it in any way, like, it's great. And, and of course, yeah, you, you can force people to blow up your graveyard, and if you have an instant speed card that returns a card from your grave, then you're able to you know, trick them into blowing up your grave. Darksteel Pendant is particularly good in decks um, that don't have much draw. Again, like, my commander can draw every turn, but it's not reliable because you must attack, and you have this big threat that people want to remove. 
Um, but yeah, so even, even just in these colors, it's worth it to run Darksteel, because scrying every turn for one mana is worth it. But in this deck, you're, you're controlling your draws. So even once you have a, him as a draw engine, you're able to put all lands that you would draw to the bottom to increase your odds of hitting non-lands to pump up your squad. We do have one more aura uh, that is in the category of like protecting my commander. It's, it's not quite pumping them up or making them scarier, it's really just protection. So if they try to Doomblade my boy or uh, murder him, then I'll just flash this in and give it protection from whatever things uh, people were doing. Broken Fall, it's a staple in green. Yeah, same thing if someone's going to destroy my stuff, but this is open information. So it forces people to use their removal on other creatures and not your stuff because they know you can play through it. Or best case scenario, they have to double down and they have to destroy your stuff twice, which makes it worth it. We have these huge heal bombs and fogs. Dawn Charm's incredible. If someone's trying to use single target removal on your commander, you're able to regenerate it. Uh, it counters fireballs and it's also a fog, so its flexibility is incredible. It's... it's it's in every white deck I make. Uh, Blunt the Assault, well, almost every white deck, maybe it is every white deck. Blunt the Assault is incredible with token strategies and so is Riot Control. This is against token strategies, this is alongside token strategies. But at the end of the day, these are just fogs that heal insane amounts. So they are also good against things like Fireball. Um, Riot Control actually protects you against the damage, this is just uh, combat damage, but healing a whole bunch when you have a bunch of creatures, it makes it a, a soft counter. So these are the fogs. Uh, I'm usually tapped out. I don't give my creatures vi uh, vigilance, and there are probably some more cards I should put in here like that give all my creatures vigilance so that when I have these aggressive turns, I, um, I'm not super open to getting knocked out. We do have a few draw cards here. Uh, Relic of Mergenitus is just another Tor Mods, um, but it's everyone's grave instead of target players. And uh, yeah, you also draw a card. So I always put this as a <clears throat> categorically a draw card in my decks, even though the reason I'm running it is because I want to run as many Grave Bombs as I can. We have the two Monarch cards I can run in, the, in these colors. Always useful. Um, it's an additional value with Wirewood Herald because this is an elf, so you're able to turn this into, into draw if you have the mana and time to, to piece it together. Um, Pal Sentinels, again, it just gives you Monarch. Really, really great cards. Snake Umbra, um, love this card to death. It's protection for my commander if I need it. My commander does a trample, so some damage is going to go through, so I'm able to use it as, as repeatable draw. You really can't go wrong. And again, I can tutor for this, which is really, really nice. So one last card that didn't really have a category is Pulse of Marasa. Yeah, just uh, if someone's threatening to blow up your graveyard, in response, you can return something. So it's, it's, it's a card that replaces itself, and you, you gain life for three minutes. Very, very good. It's, it's competitive in not only Popper, but Popper Commander. So we have really just ramp cards left. Cards that pull double duty. Oh, there's another category, sorry. There's a Centaur Rootcaster. Love this card to death. Um, it's, it's ramp, repeatable ramp with a risk. So if people are able to destroy it, yes, you're spending four mana and you get nothing for it. But if no one can deal with it, then you're going to keep on getting in and putting lands into play just for attacking. And with my strategy, I'm trying to attack every turn. So getting extra value for it is really, really great. Um, we have... Sutra Priest, which is just a generically good card for the format. A lot of strategies, and you can tell from the decks I make, I have a lot of uh, token strategies. Um, so yeah, it, it, it puts a damper into other people's game plan. In the very least, if you're playing creatures, then you're gaining life. So it really is never a bad draw. Unless, of course, there's a, a whole bunch of pinging effects that deal one damage, then you don't. one butts always suck for that reason. So I've shown this card a few times. Wirewood Herald. This is a little combo I run in a lot of decks can search for Fierce Empath. I don't always, but it's usually my go-to. Um, in this deck, yeah, I'd probably search for one of my combo pieces if I'm able to slap it together. But Fierce Empath is a target, and what Fierce Empath gets is a creature that costs six or more, and these are my two targets. These cards are insanely good. Uh, Fenger Marauder is just incremental life gain. You put it out, everyone's artifacts are on lockdown. So sometimes people just sack their Mind Stones or their Commander Spheres in response, 
So now you're just making them draw. They're ma you're making them activate effects they were going to hold off for a while. Um, it usually gets hated off the board, so this is a really good magnet for removal if you're trying to protect your commander. Orchard Elemental, um, everyone, gain, uh, everyone votes if you're going to gain life or put plus one, plus one counters on it. You really can't go wrong. In this deck, you're happy to gain life, you're happy to put counters. It's just always, always good. Uh, you vote however you want and just take however everyone else votes. We have one more elf. Copperhorn Scout. Basically gives all my creatures vigilance, and it's another card I can pump up. I can play on the early curve. Um, and <laughs> in a lot of situations, since I have so many mana dorks, it'll be untapping creatures that tap for mana. So I can be really aggressive uh, emptying my hand, just dumping creatures into play. And if I'm able to untap my mana dorks, then main phase two, I'd be able to um, you know, use those mana dorks to cast some more cards if I have them. So really, really good for the strategy. So now we just have some more ramp to fill out the curve. Cultivate and Kodama's Reach. Always good. Probably the best ramp cards ever made. You just search your deck for two lands, put one to play tapped, one in your hand. Plus one card advantage and mana acceleration. Very, very, very good. Now we have some mana rocks. Mindstone and Commander Sphere. So these are the mana rocks to tap for mana and also draw a card. In the same category as Orozco Relic. Um, the color fixing actually doesn't matter that much. We're not too worried about it. You just want to make sure you have at least one green mana so you can cast your mana dorks. Other than that, nothing is really that strict. Everything, very, very few things cost um, a painful amount of mana. We also have Slesnia Locket, which also sacks to draw cards. Really, really good in these colors because there are no draw twos. So yeah, you also get to accelerate your mana a lot. So it's not too uncommon where you're going to crack this pretty early. Sears Lantern is particularly good in this deck. It is mana acceleration, and you're happy to spend that mana to scry if that means you get to pump him up more or perhaps put a land on top for Explorer's Scope. Or together. That's a really nice little interaction is if you have all three. And Pristine Talisman, the, the granddaddy of the mana rocks in our format, incremental life gain. It, uh, people just kind of let you <laughs> pillow up a little bit, so it's nice to have mana acceleration that has basically no downside. So now we can go ahead and kill the lands, and then we're going to be done for now. We have Command Tower and Blossoming Sands. These both uh, are dual lands in this deck. Uh, this one comes into play tap, but you gain a life, and Command Tower is just insanely good. You run it in every multicolor deck. We have the Bounce Lands. I love this guy because you can keep an aggressive hand, and if you have um, you know, fewer lands in your opening hand, this basically counts as one extra land drop. So you lose a little bit of tempo, but you can you can get away with, with more. And with the curve being so many one mana cost creatures, you're happy to just play a forest turn one and then play a bounce land next turn. Just because just like, maybe you're going to play another mana dork the, the next turn. So it, it's fine to have this. We have Opal Palace and Path of Ancestry. Your commander is a magnet for hate. So casting him over and over again, even if it's slow and grindy, pumping him up, yeah, you're probably going to get even more hate for it. But you're just getting more and more value every time you get away with it. Path of Ancestry is just another dual land in this deck, but when you cast your commander, I'm not sure if there's any other elementals, but if you cast your commander, you get to scry as well, and scrying with your commander is very, very good. This is really good if you can give him haste that turn, because you're able to attack that turn and see what was on top. Onto Fengraf or Creature Recursion. Cradle of the Accursed. Um, it's another token that you can put into play for Woodvine Elemental, so you can get an extra value out of his parlay. Um, give him Protection. This is one of the best cards in... I think this is one of the best uh, of, of the cycle of lands, just because in our format we do run a lot of cards like Lignify, where you're enchanting a commander and just turning it off. So if someone has my commander Lignified and I can't do anything with it, if I, if I draw this land, I'm able to just cleanse that off by giving it pro green. Colony Garden is also very, very good and very good in this strategy because it's just another creature you have in, on board. So it's just another card that's going to get pumped up. You just swing with your zero one and hope it's going to get pumped up. And then now we have nothing but basic lands. Um, the total, the, the ratio is skewed a little bit towards green, um, just because you want to hit your mana acceleration, because you can always color fix with, uh, with your ramp cards. Um, and you run 35 lands total. So that's the deck. There's plenty of changes I can make. Um, it's still a work in progress. Uh, I get hated off the board, so I don't know if there's ways to make it actually invincible. But I really love it, and I'm glad you guys sat through this and watched it with me. Um, this is PDH Paladige. Signing off.